Okay, so next couple videos uh, concern polarity and molecular interactions. Uh, these will be in your notes, so I'm not going to go completely everything out over it. But I want to just talk briefly what, um, why it's, what, what makes it polar or nonpolar. And again, again, this use, as we just talked about lipids, you see how that's important. Okay, um, polarity is how the electrical charge is distributed on a molecule. And you can have two cases. One where it's unequally distributed, and we call it a polar molecule because it has a plus and minus ends, it has charged ends. Okay, and the other type is nonpolar, where there's an equal dis distribution of uh, charge, and therefore it looks like there's no charge at all. There's, it's evenly distributed, all plus and minus. So it doesn't look like there's any kind of plus or minus on those guys. Okay. Uh, what determines a molecule is polar or nonpolar? One is what is the electronegativity um, of the atoms in the molecule? And I went over samples of that. I'll look at that. I should talk about um, hydrogen versus HF, HH versus HF, and beryllium dihydride versus water, etc. Uh, and finally, how can you identify if a molecule is polar or nonpolar? Now, this is a wide polar, but how you can identify it. If you look at the structure, at the actual bonding structure of a molecule, if the center molecule has, the center atom has, the molecule has the same things attached. And I gave you a list like CH4, CO2, O2, etc where they, the center atom has the same thing attached, then uh, they, we can determine that that's going to be a nonpolar molecule. If it has different things attached, for instance, uh, this guy right here, this guy here right here has a fluorine and a hydrogen, this would be polar. I can tell that this would be polar because that's different. But if it's has the same things attached, like this guy then is going to be non-polar. Uh, then I also said, like in the case of water, looks like it has the same things attached, but it actually doesn't. The center atom oxygen has hydrogens and lone pairs. So lone pairs are considered a thing. That's why I have things in quotation. Now, uh, another way you can tell if you have a polar or nonpolar molecule, especially in biological molecules where there's lots of carbons and oxygens and hydrogens all involved, is if the ratio of carbons and oxygen um, and carbon dioxide doesn't count, okay? Um, but if the ratio of carbons to high oxygen is greater than three to one, you probably have a nonpolar molecule. And I gave you examples of that. So you, so you need to know this first. And then the next short video is gonna be how these guys, what happens when you put polar molecules with each other? What put, happens when you put nonpolar molecules with each other? And when you compare, combine the, the polar with nonpolar. And those are called molecular interactions. <laughs>